Okay, so that was the random genetic drift. Um, combined with the genetic drift is the bottleneck effect. It's very simple to understand. Um, this bottleneck happens when, uh, due to certain circumstances, a drastic decrease in the population size occurs. There is, for instance, a catastrophe or the, the, the area where the individuals live uh, is flooded or, or there is uh, um, a great disease like the plague and, and uh, lots of individuals are, uh, are decimated. So due to this um, dramatic event, you have a very few survivors from the original population. Necessarily, because of their small number, um, they don't have as much genetic diversity as existed in the original population. Okay, So, if these chain survivors become a population with uh, a size that is equal to the original population, you see that we, we have l lost lots of the genetic diversity that was present in the original population, okay? Just because this new population, the gene pool of this new population is the same as the one of the chance survivors, and this gene pool is much um, less rich, is much poorer than the original one. Okay, so this is uh, this is the mere effect of uh, of um, the, the fact that the survivors were few, and it's a random picking out of well, not necessarily random because they survived probably because of some um, some traits. Uh, they have that enable them to to survive, um, but yeah, it's a it's a smaller uh, set and it's a much smaller gene pool than uh, existed in the original population. That's the bottleneck effect. Um, <clears throat> similar to to that is the founders effect, when you have when um, small subgroups part from an original population to create um, another population, for instance, by migration, um, necessarily in the new population, you have, at least at the beginning of the, the history of this new population, you have also a, a smaller genetic diversity, okay? More reduced genetic diversity here, just because out of this population, these four individuals created a new subpopulation, or these four equally, they have a smaller, so here you have population that irrespective to, to its size, it has a smaller uh, genetic diversity than the original population. Okay. <clears throat> so a few principles um, about natural selection, because I'm going to, to show now in the, the, the next slides um, um, how natural selection can be, can be, can be seen at work. Um, so it's a recap from uh, one a previous slide about uh, Darwin's theory of evolution. First, um, the hypothesis is many more individuals come to life than can survive. There is a competition for resources, for mating partners also. And importantly, there is intraspecies genetic diversity. Okay, Evolution could not happen if uh, you didn't have genetic diversity within a species. So genetic diversity means that me, you, everybody else, we don't have the same genes. We, 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 have, we are diverse and um, we don't have the same alleles, rather. And um, this, this is very important because it enables some uh, individuals in the population to have a uh, higher fitness than, um, than others due to their genetic makeup that is more adapted to their environment. With this hypothesis, natural selection makes it that the individuals will have 
offsprings in proportion to their own fitness. In fact, that's one of the definitions for fitness. Fitness can be defined as the relative proportion. The fitness of an individual is the relative proportion of uh, his uh, its offsprings in the next generation. And um, so at gener at the, in the following generation, expectably, um, the gene pool of a species will be more biased towards genes that increase fitness, okay? More biased towards these genes than the previous generation. So what we can expect is to see that the genes that increase fitness, if the environment remains the same, uh, these genes are more frequent, uh, occur more frequently in generation N plus 1 than uh, in generation N. So let's see a few examples, classical examples of uh, natural selection. Um, the first one is an example of purifying selection. It's um, a mechanism of to, to select individuals with a certain um, phenotype in this case. Um, so it's um, from a study by Kettlewell, a very famous study. Uh, Kettlewell studied um, uh, some uh, moth, um, Biston betularia uh, species, um, and he studied them in an area in England um, with uh, very high industrialization and air pollution, and um, he showed that where um, in the areas of England um, where uh, heavy industries uh, were present and, and um, releasing uh, lots of smoke in the atmosphere, um, the, the dark um, subspecies, um, so that's uh, Biston betularia carbonaria, uh, was uh, more frequent um, than, than this species. Okay? Um, why? So, um, Kettlewell suggested that simply because it was easier for birds to prey on this uh, Biston betularia typica species because it's uh, it's uh, obviously more visible. Okay, so <clears throat> this uh, Carbonaria subspecies has better camouflage. And then it means uh, increased fitness. Um, birds eat both forms of, uh, of the moth, but they obviously can see this one uh, better, so they prey on, on this one rather than on this one. So this study shows that natural selection patterns depend on the nature of the environment. Um, in other parts of England, or, or where resting places are uh, of lighter color, the species, um, the subspecies uh, Biston betularia typica, um, will uh, will thrive, uh, and in 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 um, environments where resting places tend to be of darker color, the Carbonaria variant uh, will will have higher fitness. So, one of the one of the um, conclusions of this paper was that the industrialization in parts of England led to increased fitness for the melanic uh, form, the carbonaria form. And interestingly, it's been shown since that this uh, pattern was, uh, the selection pattern was reversible, meaning that in previously highly industrialized um, areas of England, um, while they they went gradually greener with less uh, carbon monoxide, less um, smokes uh, released uh, in the air, um, scientists have witnessed an increase in uh, the abundance of the typical form, so the the light colored form. Okay, so it really means that. Um, natural selection plays its role because um, because individuals with uh, higher fitness 
get uh, positively selected and um, and tend to 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 uh, to thrive at the expense of the other uh, type of of, uh, of moth. The second example is completely different. Uh, it's a study uh, about uh, birth weight and infant survival, and it's a case of stabilizing selection, meaning that um, the extreme phenotypes are uh, rejected or are um, negatively selected, are selected against. Um, we are talking here about the weight of an infant at birth, um, and um, so the study uh, was uh, about trying to uh, quantifying um, the proportion of survivors versus non-survivors. So here on the y-axis you have the log of survival, log of the ratio of survivors uh, versus non-survivors. So the higher on the y scale, the more survivors you have. Um, Non-survivors include mortality by uh, stillbirth and, um, generally speaking, all um, infants that do not go uh, past the 28-day uh, milestone. Um, <clears throat> you see that the mean mortality rate for females and males is here, okay, and the mean um, the mean birth weight is is rather uh, on the left of this uh, y um, of these vertical lines. Here it's the optimal after uh, fitting of this curve. The the researchers found that the optimal weight is higher than the mean weight. Okay. Um, but the optimal weight is not uh, the maximum weight, meaning that um, it's um, a disadvantage for uh, an infant, let's say, to be um, too tiny, of course. Here in this area, you have uh, infants that do not survive because they are not strong enough, not healthy enough. But interestingly here, you have infants too heavy and they are also selected against because of uh, higher risks of um, birth injury um, or maternal death. Um, so <clears throat> there is a normalizing selection force that, that tends to favor um, the... the the infants with a, a weight that is high but not not as high as the, the maximum okay um, so this is this is a very strong example of natural selection because clearly uh, natural selection is at play because um, the, the survivors are those who are uh, selected and uh, and the non-survivors are those who, who die. So that's exactly in line with, um, with um, Darwin's uh, theory that uh, many more come to life than, than can survive. And here you have an example of uh, many, and we, we know that in all the human populations we have a certain rate of... Uh, of uh, early death uh, of infants, and that's a mechanism of, of selection. It's interesting to note that a further uh, study, a more recent study, uh, by Italian researchers shown that showed that um, this normalizing selection force uh, was relaxed in wealthy environments, in environments where uh, you have improved medical care um, infants or basically in, in with good um, medical care we have uh, infants that would be in this region or non-survivors in this region that that make it and that become survivors because of the good uh, health care and also in this region okay so the, we say that the, the, the selection uh, pressure is relaxed. It's not 
uh, in other terms, the, the, the weight at birth is not a critical factor anymore uh, to decide uh, about survival. So, so yeah, that's, that's an interesting uh, point to notice that um, selection forces um, do fluctuate over time depending on the environment. Um, adaptive radiation is also um, is also uh, a process um, that is like okay that 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 enters into the category of natural selection, but um, it's an example of how when um, the constraints um, or the selection forces are relaxed. This is an example of how uh, pop we, we witness uh, um, rapid population growth and rapid um, growth in the number of species. So the most famous example of uh, adaptive radiation is the Cambrian explosion. Um, radiation or explosion means uh, quite sudden uh, appearance of, um, of lots of new species. Um, <clears throat> the Cambrian explosion led to the advent of most animals on uh, on our planet in a relatively short period of time, and um, some scientists have uh, argued that as a possible cause for that, the fact that um, oxygen, atmospheric oxygen, uh, increased dramatically after photosynthesis and so photosynthesis. Um, and um, photosynthetic plants um, create uh, or release um, atmospheric oxygen, and so before before that time, here you have you had uh, species that were living um, underground or, or under under sea uh, under water, and uh, quite. Quickly after the advent of uh, of, uh, of plants, um, the, the the proportion of um, oxygen in the atmosphere um, raised very very quickly. So you know that uh, our current atmosphere is uh, uh, mostly. Um, Nitrogen N two and then and um, so eighty percent nitrogen twenty percent oxygen or something like this, and um, and obviously before that without oxygen, um, the forms of life that could uh, could uh, live uh, above sea level uh, on on the ground um, were very few. So the Cambrian explosion. The explosion of all uh, of the advent of most uh, animals uh, happened when the Earth uh, become uh, livable. So that's that's an, um, that's a case where you see that um, when natural environments uh, become available, um, they 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 lead to uh, lots of species. Uh, taking advantage of this new niche of these new natural uh, ecosystems, so life goes wherever it it can basically. Um, in your practical, you'll see uh, these different um, finches, small birds, uh, from the Galapagos uh, archipelago, and um, you see. Um, Okay, uh, Darwin uh, witnessed uh, the, the, these different um, witnessed the, the fact that these different birds were differentially represented in the different islands in the Galapagos. So they, they <clears throat> each island came with its makeup of the different species, and some some species were absent, were totally absent from some islands. Um, and these species have different characteristics. Notably, they have different um, bills. 
different shapes of the bills so they feed on different um, on uh, different feeds and um, they evolved evolved sorry into separate species to better adapt to different environmental conditions and the different uh, type of feeds that are found on the different uh, Galapagos uh, islands so it's another example of uh, adaptive radiation uh, that happened uh, over a relatively short amount of time. Uh, those birds colonizing in a way the different islands and very quickly adapting to the different environments seen uh, in these different islands to the point that they became um, different species. And we're going to see in the, in the last slides of this series of slides um, how those those events of uh, speciation of creation of different species from a single one uh, how how these events occur these events occur sorry 